Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depends on where you are. And hello, everybody. My name is Daniel O. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. In this video, I'm going to show you how Quarkus bring Java developer to serverless world. Okay, here is a couple of things for take away from this video. We're going to show you why Quarkus code as a supersonic software with Java, as well as a Kubernetes native Java stack. And also, you're going to learn how to evolve your existing cloud native Microsoft application to serverless with the Java workload. Let's get started. Okay, there are multiple ways to start the Quarkus application development. So I'm going to choose to start from Quarkus. Uh, code.quarkus.io so you didn't need to uh, start the application development from scratch so here are just starter so you can uh, set your group name and artifact name and can you also choose the build tool from Mayboon or Gradle so in this case I'm going to use a Mayboon uh, project and you can also add uh, some common uh, dependency library as a Mayboon project Mayboon uh, dependencies so once you uh, choose whatever you need and just click on download the G file and extract and open that file with your prepper ID tool. So in this video, I'm going to use a VS Code. So this is a sample application uh, from code.io. So all uh, some uh, fundamental uh, skeleton code is already pulled down. You can see here the couple of uh, dependencies like REST EG uh, uh, to export the REST API. So I'm going to start the Quarkus application uh, uh, to run the using Quarkus dev mode. This is one of the beauty of the Quarkus. You can see uh, the, the version of the Quarkus, the raised one of 1.5.0 final. But, uh, and uh, you can see here the dev, uh, the profile dev is activated as well as the live encoding activated. So what does that exactly mean, live encoding? So I'm going to show you that thing. Let's try to access the endpoint, uh, hello world. And now we're going to change the code, uh, like just daily work from developers. I'm going to change the return code, welcome Quarkus uh, with serverless, and just reload this uh, endpoint. But you just see the uh, return code is just changed. I just need the half a second to make it happen. The actually Quarkus make it happen for me without any reveal repackaging stuff. So now I'm going to build artifact like a flint jar. And I'm going to run that application using Java command line. That's a, a, a usual stuff for Java developer. So you can see here CDI or REST EG. And uh, when I run, I got the same application. Just take a look at that, uh, the memory for free when you run this Java application. I got to see uh, almost 80 megabyte as memory for free to run this simple RESTful API application. And now I'm going to try to uh, rebuild this application using native compilation. This is one of the beauty of the Quarkus framework to uh, give some, you can build your uh, application using native compilation. So Java was born uh, with a great feature like dynamic behavior to parsing annotation and a method and a class uh, loading at runtime. But now we have a more familiar with the Kubernetes cluster, which means you need more uh, optimization uh, to fit it in a Kubernetes cluster. This native compilation uh, uh, make that happen with the solve the dynamic behavior or with the optimization. So. I'm gonna run. Uh, I'm gonna run uh, this native compilation file now. You just need the 13 million milliseconds to start up, and also the pro uh, product uh, profile is activated. And I'm gonna go to uh, the memory uh, buffering uh, to run this executable file. I just need uh, 6.1 megabyte. It's almost 300 times fast. Uh, uh, 20 times you rest the memory footprint. And also you can see this is executable file only available where you build this file. In this example is a Mac OS. So let's try to rebuild once again to run the Linux operating system. So I'm gonna use a Docker container with just single line in my application properly and I try to rebuild. 
I'm trying to make it faster and now I got a new uh, uh, executable file but now you can see the file for me is operation because I need to build a uh, deploy this application to uh, Kubernetes cluster so this is uh, my OpenShift the container platform on top of the Kubernetes cluster so I'm gonna go to dev console and try to uh, create a new project first and then deploy uh, this application actually I already uh, packaging as a container and uh, push it into my external container registry so I'm gonna just de pull down uh, the, uh, the, uh, the application from external registry I'm gonna enable KNAV service to deploy this application as a serverless so I'm gonna uh, uh, running up in, a, in a just a couple of seconds but actually uh, it's uh, just a million seconds to start up so the same I'm going to try to access endpoint the same result. Here's the thing. Uh, this is just super awesome to, uh, because the uh, K native is automatically scaled down to zero your application in a second. So just imagine you got many choices to run a serverless application using the Java or even a Python Go different language platform, but which one would be better to start up? I mean, faster start up, small memory footprint, and also you need to uh, high scalability with uh, their Microsoft application for serverless. So this is a pretty much better than any other Java framework and also the different language platform. You will see the 15 milliseconds to start up this application, which means that the end user perspective perspective they even cannot recognize this application already scaled down to zero as a part of the serverless capability so now let's try to deploy this application on another serverless platform uh, Microsoft Azure function I'm not going to change any application code but I just put in the another focus extension as a function uh, into my Maven Palm XML and I just try to rebuild deploy this application using uh, Maven Azure plugin. So once you build this application uh, uh, based on a thin jar and then and try to uh, deploy Azure directly without any uh, external command. So go to Azure function and it takes a couple of seconds to uh, come up and now I'm gonna try to endpoint loud URL that is generated uh, automatically from Azure and I'll go to same endpoint uh, URL uh, API dash corpus in this case and now we got the same result so I'm going to quick summary I have one corpus application but deploy uh, multiple serverless platform thank you for watching